All right, tonight we're on our fifth session of our ongoing series called Life Goals. I know there are some of you who've been here the past couple of sessions, and I know that, and I pray that you've been blessed about the past couple of sessions, and I also know that there are a few of you, or a couple of you that are here tonight, being your very first time. So let me just share to you quickly what this new series is all about. This new series is called Life Goals. Life Goals is a goal, is hashtag Life Goals, is really a, an attempt for us to be relevant to the people nowadays. Because normally we have squad goals, we have life goals, we have all of these different goals. And what's the amazing thing about goals is that it's something that you need to know so that you could really target. People who don't know their target really will not have any goal. And so the things that, we will, that we've talked about for the past couple of weeks revolved around what should we really aspire for in life. Because when you ask people, I don't think I have met anyone who have answered my simple question of, would you want to be successful? I, don't, I, don't, I haven't encountered anyone who have said, no, I don't want to be successful. Lahat na kinausap ko, lahat na tinanong ko about that question, would you want to be successful? Lahat sila nagsasabing, yes, I want to be successful. And so no one would ever say, no, I don't want to be successful. But the question is, do we really know how to be successful in life? Because one of the worst things for us to happen is that we will work our entire life to become successful, and yet what we were really working for were really not the ones that would actually matter at the end. And that's why this Life Goal series is an ongoing campaign designed for us to realize and understand what it means to truly succeed in life. And if, we, if you're here with us for the past couple of weeks, we have been defining what true success is. And true success is really understanding and becoming what God wants you to be and doing what God wants you to do, and at the end of your life, God telling you, well done, good and faithful servant. That is the true success that we defined is consistent to what the Bible is saying, and as brothers and sisters in Christ, we should really truly aspire for. Because worldly success, what the world is talk, talking about success is money, uh, relationship, power, popularity, all of these things, at the end of the day, will actually come short if you truly want to succeed in life. Because if money, relationship, power, and success, popularity are really the ones that would make us truly successful, why are there so many people who are rich, who are famous, who are popular, and yet are still so sad and still feel empty in their lives? And that's why here our pursuit is understanding what true success means. And we have redefined that in our first session. And then in the second session, we talked about how do we become successful in our workplace, sa trabaho. Paano ba maging successful sa trabaho? At ang pangatlong session natin ginawa is how to be successful in finances. Nandito, chino nandito, chino nandito nung session number three. When talk about success in finances. Meron ba dito? Nandito? Okay. Nahihiyang magtaas na kamay? Okay lang din. All right. For the fourth session, we've talked about balancing life. Right? How do we really balance life? Importante yun. Kailangan natin magbalance ng buhay natin. And tonight, we're going to talk about, for me, personally, is the most, one of the most important aspects of a person's drive for success. Our session for tonight is called How to Succeed in Family Relationship. Lahat ba rito may pamilya? Siyempre, hindi, wala, hindi pwedeng lang dito. Wala ka pamilya. Paano ka nangyari? Musubong ka na lang. Hindi pwede. Pinanganak ka, di ba? And so therefore, you have to be part of a family. Now, what's, what's, what's the reason why I'm so passionate about this message, mga kapatid, eh simple lang po. Isa lang po ang rason kung bakit ako napaka-passionate sa message ito ngayong gabi na to. It's because I am surrounded by men and women who are very, very passionate in life. Sobrang passionate sa trabaho. Sobrang passionate sa, sa hobby. Sobrang kinakarir ang mga, ang mga activities. Talagang all out. You know, manood lang ng sine, karir. Alam niyo ba yan? In, as, in, as in everything, talagang all out. They're so passionate about sports. Napaka-competitive. About sports. Sa trabaho. Halos hindi na matulog. Because so passionate. Talagang gusto gusto pag-trabaho, magpakapagod para maging successful sa kanilang trabaho. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? Kaya lang ang problema is, for my own personal belief, and I hope it's your belief also. The problem is, we're so driven in our work, we're so driven in our careers, we're so driven in our pursuits, in like business, interests, whatever it is, we're so, we're so driven in ministry, 
in serving God, but we're never really that driven when it comes to family. Bakit ganun? Bakit lahat ng bagay, buhos, 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 tawag na? Buhos, buhay. Buhos, buhay tayo sa ibang bagay. Pero pagdating sa pamilya natin, bali wala. In fact, I would even go to the extent of declaring here in front of us here that when someone has to suffer, someone will have to take the hit. We don't mind if it's the family. I mean, come to think of it, is that really the design of what we are in here? You see, I submit to you, the reason why a lot of you here, including myself, oftentimes do not really focus and drive their passion about family is because we do not see the correlation. Hindi natin nakikita yung correlation that if you have a successful, solid family relationship, right now, solid family relationship, I know there are people here that might be from broken families. I, I, I hear you. I know that. But even though I know I have friends who are from broken families, and yet their family foundations are still strong. You know why? Because they put an emphasis on working to making sure that their family relationships are okay. Because there is a direct correlation if family and yourself is okay. There is a direct correlation that when you have a solid foundation within your current family, you become more successful in life. Why? Because you're going to be grounded you're going to be protected. You have something to go through. And later on in our, in, in our message, uh, that would also be further explained. So that is the thing that I want every one of us to understand tonight. That if you want to be successful in life, if you really want to have a salesman, if you really want to have a slice of heaven here, you need to work on your relationship, specifically the family. Pangalawang napakaiportating rason. 99% natin ngayon dito, 99% nyo lahat, wala kayong asawa, 99% of you. I think may mga 1% dito that are married. Sa 99% na nandito na wala pang asawa, how we do or how we are now in our relationship in our family would spill over to our future family. Let me repeat. If what you're experiencing now in your family, you would continue to embrace and not address and not change the course, that same thing that you're experiencing in your family right now would spill over to your future family. And that's why it is of critical importance that we understand that for us to really succeed, especially in family relationship, it's something that we need to really work for. Hindi yan binabaliwala lang. Hindi yan hindi pinapansin. Hindi yan binibigyan ng atensyon. Hindi yan binibigyan ng, 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 ng intentionality. And another thing that drives this challenge about family is because social media, social media allows us to feel connected to people no matter where we are. But the irony of all is that the more high-tech we become, the less we seem to communicate. Napansin ko yan. Sa bahay namin, dalawa na lang kami ng nanay ko eh. Kami ng dalawa na ng nanay ko ha. Nag-uusap pa kami minsan through Facebook eh. Oh, kasi nakikita ko, nagla-like siya sa isang, sa isang picture. Nagla-like ko sa isang picture. Sabi ko, eh, nag-like ka sa isang picture. Nakakatawa nga, dahil nauuna palagi ang nanay ko mag-like sa Facebook kaysa ako, sa lahat ng mga friends ko. And so sometimes I still feel connected. And I tell him, oh, ma, mag-speak ako mamayang gabi sa Big Friday's pag mo ako. Oh, alam ko, paano? Nasa Facebook eh. <laughs> and, and so my mom thinks, and I sometimes feel that we're connected, but, but sometimes that's a false sense of connectivity, right? And I think that doesn't add it doesn't add, it doesn't give us that connectivity, that relationship that we really need to work for. And I tell you, folks, we are doing a disservice, a disservice to our calling ourselves as Christians if we're not really focusing our efforts to our family. It's a disservice. Nakakahiya. Nakakahiya na sobrang busy natin sa ministry, sobrang all out tayo sa trabaho, pero sa pamilya natin, pinababayaan natin, nakakahiya. Nakakahiya na we can work all out in our workplace, we can, we're willing to extend work hours, even work on weekends, even be on call 24 hours, answer emails we hours of the morning, answer phone calls in the we hours of the morning, and yet, have little effort when it comes to our family. We need to wake up. We need to understand that. That there is no substitute. Substitute to the richness of the relationship in the family that we could really 
develop if we just strengthen our face-to-face -face communication. That actual warmth and being there. By the way, when I say being there, actually, I have the tendency to zone out. Eh. I, can be at, I can be at home, but I can totally be away. You know what I'm saying? I can just be at home, nandun ako physically, pero ut ako malayo. Or I'm so consumed in what I'm watching on TV and I don't do anything around me. And that is sad. And that's why we need to address it. Z Ziegler, Zig Ziglar once said, you can't be truly considered successful in life. In your home, is in shambles. You know, one of the more critical aspects of becoming a leader or a servant in CCF, in our church here, so we put such a premium in family. If you're here and you're part of CCF, you're blessed because th this church is really founded on foundations of family. In fact, our core values, family is one of them. And that's why I realize that there are so many issues that our country and even our families are facing today that points us to the wrong understanding of our perspective and an erosion of our values that causes our families to fall apart. And dami. I would, I would not be surprised if in each table, if in each table, there are people who are suffering problems in the family. I wouldn't be surprised. In my family alone, yung extended family ko, ang dami na yung problema. Dalawang tito, tita ko, tatlong tito ko, hindi nag-uusap. Pwede ba yun, hindi nag-uusap? Pag Christmas, pag Christmas, nagkikita-kita, pero hindi pa rin nag-uusap. Anong klaseng Christmas yun? Why? Because of petty squabbles. And folks, if they're not getting it, we need to get it, tayo. We need to get it so that when we have our own families, we will, we will destroy all of these things. We'll take away all of this misconception about family because we need to realize that being disconnected to our family is just a symptom of, of a deeper issue that confronts us, a deeper issue. And that's why we need to make our family our priority, our priority. Some of us here, you need to hear this message. Some of us here, we need to really embrace this message. And I pray tonight, God will speak to you. Father God, I praise and thank you for this wonderful privilege that you have given us an opportunity just to gather in a safe, comfortable place where there's air conditioning, where it's not hot, where we're in company of people that we like to be with, when there's food, and then when we could really read meditate and listen and understand your words in the Bible. Father, tonight I pray that this very important message would really communicate to all of us here tonight. Because we know, Lord, that the basic ministry, your basic ministry, Lord, here on earth is the family. So teach us. Teach us, Lord, to have an importance and a drive to really do our part in our responsibility to do what it takes for us to become successful in our family. We commit to you all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 50% of people, 50% of couples in the States, and I won't, be, I, I, I won't be surprised if it's not far from the Philippines. Couples, 50% divorce rate, one out of two. One out of two. And nobody's making a qualm about it. So how do we solve that? We can't solve that now. We need to solve, I mean, we cannot solve, we cannot solve that there, but we can solve it now. Tayo, tayo. We need to understand what it is. And that's why the main platform where we could really talk about how it is to be successful in our family relationship is to go back to what the Bible is saying, how the Bible defines love. And there is a chapter with a few verses in the Bible, in the New Testament, that eloquently captures the definition of what love is. You know, every time I go to these verses, every time I go to this chapter, even though I kept, I have read it a hundred, I mean, not a hundred, baka, baka a hundred times, hindi ko mabilang eh. Ilang beses ko ito nabasa, ilang beses ko na tinitignan, but every time I listen and I read it again, it just speaks to me amazingly on how we truly need to do and understand what love is. So let me, let me just throw it there in, this, in the screen. And, and, and you and me, Come together in reading this, okay? We'll read verses 1 to 7, and then we'll jump to verse 13. So we're just going to talk about actually one verse tonight, but we're going we're gonna to look at the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Everybody, are you, are you ready to read this? Okay, let's go. Verse 1. If I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy 
and know all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Wow. I mean, can we just let that simmer a bit into all of us and understand kung gano ka importante ang love? Look at this. You can do anything. You can even remove the mountains. But if you have no love, it means nothing. It means nothing. So verse 1 to, thir- verse one to 3 in this amazing chapter talks about the primacy of love, meaning the importance of love. Let's go to verse 4 to 7. Verse 4, everybody. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not jealous. Love does not brag. It's not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoke. Does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Wow! People come to me, Pastor Ikoy, I have so much love to give. I don't know really, wala na ako bigyan. Sabi ko, basahin mo tong chapter na to. Tingnan mo, dyan mo i-compare. Yung pagmamahalo bang naradaman sa puso mo, yan ba yan? Kasi kung hindi yan, wow. Kasi the more I look at this definition of love, the more I realize I'm so far away from what truly love is. And I'm embarrassed thinking that I am a guy who can love. And yet when I look at this definition, look, believes all things, bears all things, hope all things, endures all things. Come on. Eh, isang malate lang nga yung ka- kasama natin. Galit na tayo eh. I mean, look at this, right? And, and this, amazing ver- this amazing chapter is summed up in verse 13. Everybody, read this with me. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of all this is love. Verse 1 to 3 in this amazing chapter talks about the primacy, the importance of love. Verse 4 to 7 in this amazing chapter talks about the perfection of love. And verse 9 to 13 talks about the permanence of love. So next time you read verse 13, you look at those three things. The importance, the perfection, and the permanence, the future, the promise of the amazing love. But tonight, because I am only giving one half of the message, we're going to talk about only one thing. The perfection of love. Perfection. How do, we per- how do we apply it? Given that we are so messed up at times. We're, so, we're messed up. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't really ho- hold back in that assessment. We're messed up when it comes to applying love. So let us learn tonight and be reminded again how the Bible speaks about love. You know, this is a Bible study, right? This is a Bible study. So... Let me tell you about what a Bible study is. A Bible study is trying to understand what the text of the Bible is trying to convey, trying to say. Early on in my Christian walk, I decided that I have the ability to understand the Bible, which was totally different, and layo. That day, I read the Bible on what I perceive the Bible is saying. And I realized that as I read the Bible, I am perceiving things in the Bible that is totally opposite on what the Bible is saying. Sobrang layo. Sobrang mali. Kaya na-realize ko later on that the ability to understand the Bible is to understand, understand what the text is saying. So if you're starting off in your Christian walk, if you start to read the Bible, don't, don't allow your, ins, your, your own perception ruin what the Bible is trying to tell you. You need to understand what the text is being, or what the author of the text wanted to convey. So the key is not how you understand the Bible, that's the application part. The key is understanding what the Bible is trying to say to you. So you have to take it from that perspective. So when you study the Bible, you need to understand, ano pa yung sinasabi ng text? Ano pa yung sinasabi ng, ng mga words na yan? Remember, this is written 2,000 years ago. In fact, some 3,000 years ago. So you will have a different, people when you're writing it might have a different concept on how we review and read the Bible today. That's why if you're here and you want to know more about the, what the Bible is saying, the key is understanding what the text is saying. So tonight, we're going to talk about that. And tonight, before I 
be, before I pass the baton to my co-speaker for this evening, we can just talk about one verse. Verse 7 lang. See? Bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endure all things. I'm going to... Re- I'm going to rush into this because I only have about eight minutes left, okay? So you have to buckle in, okay? Buckle up, pare, okay? Ready? All right. First thing, what did you notice? Ano yung notice yung dito? Ang una na nakikita, merong all things, paulit-ulit, right? That's the first thing to jump off. All things, all things, all things, all things. The idea here is simple. What the Bible text trying to convey to us is that what the command is, is something that you need to apply consistently. That means it's a lifestyle. It's not a one-time act. It's not ngayong week na to, gagawin ko to, next week hindi ko na gagawin. No, that's not it. It's overarchingly consistent in what this verse is trying to give us in terms of its command. All things. So it's an attitude. It's repeated for emphasis. So if I'm going to read this, and I'm going to use my words in verse 7, it will talk about love is supportive, Love is hopeful, love is loyal, love is trusting. That's the command. So if you love someone, you will be loyal to him or lo- loyal to her, no matter what the cost, specifically in the context of family. Okay, let me, let me by the way, oh, kaklaro ko lang to. Since 99% of us here are singles, oh, yun naman pala eh, oh. Bears all things, eh. Endures all things, eh. So, kahit ang labo-labo namin, tutuloy ko kayo, eh. Kasi girlfriend ko to. Kailangan paglaba ko to. No, no, no. The context here is in the context of family. So, either husband and wife, meaning hindi na kayo pwede maghiwalay, or kapatid mo, hindi mo pwedeng iwanan. Okay? So, that's the context. Nakakaintindihan ba tayo? Kasi marami tayo rito ng ano, eh. Romantiko. Alam niyo may romantiko? Pag nakakita ng mga, wow, ganun pala yung love endures all things. So kahit na ayaw niya ako, pagpipilitan ko. Hindi, hindi yan, hindi yan. I mean, it's a different context, right? So bears all things, hope all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. By the way, by the way, also, since I'm going to discuss this in the next 10 minutes, wag ka po tayo magkaka-idea na yung pala yung sinasabi ng Bible, eh, endures, believes, believe all things. So lahat na sabihin niya, kinakakaw maniwala. Kasi nakaragay ito, believe all things, eh. No, 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 no. Remember, in verse 6, it talks, love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. So that means love is not blind. Merong discernment, may wisdom. May kinamaintindihan, iniluloko ka na eh, oo ka pa ng oo. Hindi pwede yun. Kasi sabi doon, does not rejoice in unrighteousness. Binabola ka na, ilang beses ka na inuutangan. Love mo ba ako? Love mo ba ako? Gano'n. <laughs> Diba? Hindi po ganon. Okay? So it's not also going to be blinded. Love is not blind as well. Because there has to be wisdom. There has to be discernment. Because it says it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Okay? I wanted to make sure that we get that. Okay? All right. So what does bears all thing mean? You know, remember, I told you already now, when it's a Bible study, you need to understand what the word is saying. Anin text? Anin yung sabi niyan? Bears all things. Ang bears all things, ang original word idea ng the word bear is to protect by covering. To protect by covering or to conceal. Okay? So meron akong dito, ayan, may example ako dito. Ito ang ibig sabihin ng bear all things. Bear, ito, bears. Love is like this container. It conceals. So for example, yung cellphone ko, yung, yung dalawang tao nagmamahala, magkapatid, Ma- mother, father, or mag-asawa. Pag nasa loob yan, that means love bears it. What does that mean? It means it conceals. It means it covers. It means it protects. So pag may mga gustong sumira dun sa relationship na yun, yun love ang magpo-protect. That's what it means, bears all things. Also, pag nakita mo yung bear, nakap- nakapatong, that means kung ano yung pinaghihirapan nito, love will contain it. Love will sustain it. So for example, natapunan to ng tubig, yung telepono, kunyari yung telepono, pag tinapunan ng tubig, masisira ba yung telepono pag hindi waterproof yung telepono? Yes. Okay? Hindi yung take question. Yes, masisira. <laughs> Kaka mga nasa harap, ha, ha, pa, take question ba yan? Totoo yan. Okay? Kunyari, ganyan. So, so, in the same analogy, yun ang love. Yung love is, pag may sisira doon sa relationship, puprotect na anong love. At yung love, when you say bears all things, there is an idea 
of confidentiality. Yung mga nangyayari doon sa loob, hindi lumalabas. Yun yung love. Eh, yung gan- meron, alam, lahat ng, lahat ng kapalpakan ng asawa sinasabi sa Facebook eh. Pwede ba naman yun? Lahat, pati pabababae, pa, lahat sinabi rin sa Facebook eh, wow, that's not love. Because love conceals. Love does not leak out. It's the idea of bearing all things is that there is a cloak of love around it. So, paprotekta mo, hindi mo aawayin. So, sa pamilya natin, paprotekta ba tayo? Kapatid natin, paprotekta ba natin? Magulang natin, paprotekta ba natin? Because that's the idea of bear all things. And from this definition, we see that, that love protects the beloved by covering them by concealing them, what would harm them. Wow! Concealing what would harm them. You know, nanay ko kasi medyo mabilis, mag, medyo 75 years old na nanay ko, syempre medyo madaling mag, maging anxious. So, so, ano ako, ingat na ingat ako pag nag-share ako ng mga information sa kanya. Kasi may mga bagay hindi na kailangan malaman eh. Right? Para hindi na siya, para concealed na siya. Before, when I was leading a team, there are things that, that there are news that comes to me that I'm so eager to share to them, pero pag sinil ko sa kanila, sasama lang ang loob nila eh. So, ba't ko pa kailangan i-share? Sa akin na lang. Right? Ako na natatanggap. You know, there are certain things that has to be like that when we expound and apply our love to people. Bears all things. You know, it's, it's love does not broadcast the problems of everyone. Love doesn't run away with others with jokes. Diba? Nakita, nakita mo na ba yun? May kapatid, kapatid ko to, may pinapakalala. Kapatid ko to, tanga yan. Ay, pwede ba yun? I mean, kahit joke lang, right? You know, it's not like that. I mean, dad ko yan, know, my dad, alcoholic eh, lasing ko eh. I mean, I, I remember my dad was an alco- severely an alcoholic guy. So growing up, when I was not yet a Christian, I hated my dad. So every time I could say something bad about him, I say it to people. And I realized that was so wrong. And so we, I had a very strange relationship with my dad until I met Jesus. And when I met Jesus, God, God changed my heart. He, he changed it in such a way that I could now really spend time with my dad, talking to him, listening to him, trying to understand him. And you know what? That was what paved the way for my mom to realize that perhaps Christianity is good because it did something to my son. He changed my son's attitude toward his dad. And so when I invited my mom to attend church with me, she didn't say no. She right away said yes. Why? Because love protects. Love bears. Love believes. Believes all things. It means that you need to, when I say believe all things, it means hindi mo paniniwala lahat ng sinasabi. Believe all things means you believe in the best of that someone. That's what believe is. That means when you hear something, when you hear a news, Uy, alam mo ba? Si, si Ganon, nag, na, na, si Ganon nagnakaw, kanyari meron ka narinig. Because you love that person, your first attitude is, really? Well, I, I don't think he's capable of doing that. I don't think she's capable of doing that. Why, the first recourse is to protect Minsan, pag walang love, oo, oh, magdanakaw nga yan. Di ba, di ba ganun ka agad eh? Right? Oo, oh, magdanakaw nga. Buti nga, man, nahuli. Di ba? You know, it's, you know why? Because our human nature, the human nature, our flesh, drives us to evil schemes. Our natural flesh is to always default on something evil. But love, love is not that. Believes all things. That means you think of the best. You think of the best of people. Do you think of the best of your family? Do you think the best of your parents, even though they did not oftentimes raise us in a nice way? Walang perfect na magulang, di ba? In fact, ang dami nilang mali eh. Totoo yun, totoo yun, ang dami nilang mali. So, anong role natin? Pag-aralan mo yung mali nila, so that ah, iiwanan mo yun at iiwasan mo yun pag ikaw na yung magulang. Understand, learn from them, and be the parent that your parents are never to you. Be that type of a parent that your parents are never to you. That is our role. And that is what you mean by love. Believe all things. Believe all things refuses to yield to, to suspicious of doubt. 
pagka believe all things, ang ibig sabihin niyan, ayaw mo na mga doubt, you, can, I, I, you don't yield. Pag meron kang doubt, teka muna, suspend file muna. Hindi mo na ako magde-decide, hindi mo na ako magre-react, hindi mo na ako magko-conclude. Mahal ko tong taon to, I think of the best of this person. And can you imagine if we're all like that in our family? If we're all like that in our loved ones, if we're all like that in our D group, wow, it's gonna be an amazing thing. Believe all things. You know, by the way, uh, let me just try to explain a little bit more. Believe all things does not mean that a Christian or a person like us would allow himself to be fooled. Hindi po ibig sabihin ng pagmaniniwala sa lahat. Hindi po ibig sabihin nun. Or, or you're already being taken advantage of and oo ka lang ng oo, ginagawa kang floor mat. Hindi po ibig sabihin nun. Or hindi po ibig sabihin ng believe all things means pag sinabi ng, ng mahal mo, white yan, kahit black, sabi mo, ah, white nga. I mean, hindi, hindi ganun. <laughs> hindi, hindi ibig sabihin ng ganun yun, right? Believe all things mean, believe all things means you will always think highly of the person you love. Highly. Always going to take the high road. Ngayon, pag nagkamali yung mahal mo at magkakamali yan, you have to be gracious. Believing, believing that what? There is hope. Kaya ang ganda ng pagkasusunod dito eh, ng verse 7. Lahat, eksakto eh. Believe, bears all things, believe all things. And now, when you are in believing all things, nakita mo, may mali. May mali sa pagmamahal sa, sa mahal mo sa buhay. May mali sa peras mo, may mali sa, ka, ka, sa kamag-anak mo, may mali sa kapatid mo, may mali sa magiging asawa mo, or whatever it is, when that time happens, you believe the best thing of this person, highly of this person, and why it will always bring you to what? To hope. Hindi po, hindi po, ano, it will not bring you to, to discouragement. It will not bring you to giving up. Kaya po, totoong pagmamahal is that when you want to protect and bear because you believe in the high of that person, and then you will hope that that person will always have a chance to become better. Yun yung application when it comes to perfecting love. Love is not pessimistic. Love is not pessimistic. Love shows godly optimism. Godly optimism. And to hope means to look forward with confidence to what is good and what is beneficial. Kanda, no? Kaya pag nakita mo talaga yung ibig sabihin ng love at talagang iniyakap mo yan at talagang nilagay mo sa puso mo yan, alam mo mangyayari sa'yo? Napaka-lovable mo. Diyan ka mag-concentrate. How can you be totally be lovable? How? Follow the biblical definition. And last, endures. One of my favorite words in the Bible. Endures. It means hupo meno. The original word, hupo meno simply means you are bearing under a heavy weight. Meron kang binibuhat. It means binibuhat endurance. Meron kang binibuhat. Okay? For those of you that have attended Persevere, Big 13, by the way, Big 14 na this year, pag di pa yung nakaka-attend ng Big, nako, kailangan nyo matend. Pero meron muna isa pala, Big True Life, bago yung Big 14. Okay? So, going back, endure. Pag endure, ibig sabihin yan, meron kang bit-bit. Ito yung endurance. Ito yung picture ng enduring. The word picture of the word hupomeno is an amazing word. Hupomeno means you're carrying something difficult. Mabigat. Naglalakad ka. Pag may, bin- pag may bin- meron kang, bin- meron kang kinakarga mabigat, ano yung number one gusto mo na mangyari? Pag may mabigat na mabigat, yung talagang sobrang bigat na binibigat mo. Ano mo, anong normal gawin natin? Bitawan, di ba? Ang bigat naman. Di ba? Yun yun, di ba? Buhatin mo nga ito sa kabila. Okay. Bibigatin mo, di ba? So, ang bigat. Ah! Pag hawak ako ng bigat, the first tendency, the default, is to let go. Ah, bitaw, ayoko na. Yun yung, di- yun yung tendency natin, right? But who pumo, who pumo, no? endurance is different. Endurance is this. You carry something difficult, very hard, very heavy, but you're gonna, per- you're gonna endure. You're gonna persist to bring it. Why? Because the idea is you cannot let go. Why? Because there is a reward. There is our reward in the end. Something good. Something far more beautiful than you're currently experiencing. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng hupo meno. Endurance. Kaya meron ka something good. Something coming out. Kaya yung love endures. Kasi there's something, going, there's something that's going to come out good in what you're doing. In your sacrifice towards love. In your sacrifice towards your family. In suffering for your loved one. In taking the hit. For your loved one, there's something good or positive or godly 
that will come out of it. Yung po yung endurance. So to reiterate, the attribute of love means the believer will endure patiently. The believer will patiently and triumphantly do something and hope that the best is going to come and that it will endure through the hardships just like how the apostles endured their hardships towards following Jesus Christ. Imagine mo, isang verse pa lang po yun sa 13 verses ng love. Can you imagine if you, tru- if you truly munch and really meditate on the 13 verses of this amazing chapter? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7 says, bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. You see, this love, what I just shared to you in the past 20 minutes, this love is, is a love inspired and powered by the Holy Spirit. May hirapan po tayo dito kung sarili lang natin lakas. Kung gusto mo lang sabihin, yung alam mo yan, yung, ha, kaya ko to. Ha, alam mo yan? Come on, kaya ko to. I mean, you, you know, will yourself in doing it. You know, it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be difficult. Specifically, especially, if you would apply this in the context of family. This evening, we, in, I invi- we invited another speaker. He's the first time who will speak to you tonight. And he will speak to us about the three main points of, or the three main application of why we should really work towards being successful in our family relationships. And then I'm going to come back to close us after a few minutes. Everybody, can you give our brother, Vince Grego, a warm applause, please? Vince. Good evening. You know, uh, I had uh, premier access to his preaching. So when I was reading those four points on that love bears, love believes, love hopes, love endures, I was really floored. You know, I was really amazed. Because the whole time that I was preparing for this, I said, God, I just, we just want to know you tonight. Then appropriately we talk about love. And indeed, love bears, believes, hopes, and endures. You see, that protection, that cover, that support, that confidentiality, the trust, the optimism, the acceptance, the commitment to be intact, all that is supposed to be in our families. All that is supposed to be in our families. In fact, God designed our families to reflect His love to the world. God designed that all those things, the bearing, believing, hoping, and enduring is in our families. So firstly, family is very, very important to God. Sure, it is important to us. It is important to us. In fact, we would trade any level of success in work, in finance, or wherever just to make sure that our families are all right. Amen? But that's only secondary because primary or firstly, family is very, very important to God because God has a purpose for our families and that is to reflect His love to the world. God teaches us about His nature through the family. The love of the father to the son or to or the parents to to their children. God wants that love between the father and the son to be depicted or mirrored in the family. The oneness of the father and the son. God wants that kind of oneness to be depicted, depicted, mirrored. A real actual picture to be seen and enjoyed and experienced by all of us in the family. The obedience of the Son to the Father when Jesus said, Not my will, but yours be done. God wanted that obedience to be seen and mirrored and pictured in the family. God teaches us about His nature through the family. God teaches us about the church through the family. Because you see, you will always genuinely love and care and you will always genuinely show concern and be there for your family members. And God wants the same genuine love, 
same genuine care, same genuine commitment and presence with the church. That is what God wants. He wants to teach us about His nature and about the church through our families. And that is why, that is why the enemy attacks the family. The enemy attacks the family. And how does the enemy attack the family? First, we are being attacked by, we are distracted. That instead of we build deeper relationships, we are instead lured into materialism. Instead of building deeper relationships, we focus on building wealth. That is a distraction. We are also being distracted into being individualistic, just focusing on ourselves, just focusing on ourselves, me, 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 but not really thinking about your family members. And therefore, that's why relationships in the families are not very strong because the enemy attacks us by creating divisions in the family that instead of working as one unit, working as one group, Instead of impacting the world or living with a purpose as a family, we are divided into individual units. And of course, our families are attacked by brokenness. By brokenness. And I know that this is real in many of you. And there is unforgiveness in the family. There is lack of love in the family. There is separation in the family. And those are attacks of the enemy to our families. Because the enemy knows that when a family is living out God's purpose, the family becomes an accelerator to God's kingdom, to God's mission. And how do we counter this attack? How do we counter this attack? We need to counter this attack. We need to defend our families, right? Anyone here who doesn't want to defend his family? Of course there's none. So let's learn how to defend our families. One, we need to participate in God's purpose. We need to participate in God's purpose. Yes, each of us will have a role. Singles, we will have a role. And it doesn't matter what your role is. It doesn't matter if you are the breadwinner of your family. It doesn't matter if you are the younger, youngest sister or youngest brother in your family. You may, we may come from different backgrounds. You may come from a family where everyone already follows Jesus. Or you may be in a family where it's only a few of you who follows Jesus. But you see, we need to participate to make God's purpose a reality to our families. You know, if, if you're like me, I come from a family where not everyone has already accepted Jesus. But God loves our families. Amen. There is hope for our families. In fact, you're not stuck with them. Because the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We are free to be salt and light to our families. Amen. We are free to display joy. We are free to display, to display Christ-likeness to our families. We are free to be Christ-centered to our families so that they will know we are free to live as a light so that they will know the light of the world. Amen. How do we get to the purpose? Remember, his purpose is that our families reflect his love to the world. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to click the entire time. <laughs> so that's purpose. How do we get to God's purpose? We need to be mindful of our presence. We need to be present. Love is spelled out as T-I-M-E. We cannot say that we love our families if we cannot even be there for them or we cannot even be available for them. So we need to spend time, carve out time 
to be with our families. Number two, we need to be fully present. By being fully present, it doesn't mean just physically present. We need to engage them emotionally. We need to talk to them. We need to discuss and converse with them. You know what I do? Uh, what I do if, uh, if there's nothing to talk about, um, there's Google. Then I search uh, top questions to ask for conversations. No, seriously, I do that. And what I love, okay, I'm, I'm 30. And my parents are in, uh, in, in Tarlac. So I go home every two weeks or every three weeks, huh? every two weeks. And every time I'm home, the tendency is always to, you know, just uh, go into your room and sleep the entire day. No, but I, ha I, 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 I am intentional that I, okay, it doesn't matter if it means running errands. It doesn't matter if it means doing chores. I just have to be there to engage with them. And most of the time, I sleep with my mom. I'm 30 and I sleep with my mom because it is on those nights that she gets to open to me, okay? So be fully present. Be aware, number three, be aware of magic moments. It is on those nights that I get to sleep with my mom that she gets to share. And that's why I love sleeping in my mom's room. Be aware of magic moments. Go beyond the superficial. Go beyond the superficial. Be mindful of your presence. Make the most of today. Make the most of today. When you get home this weekend, it's a long weekend. Just take a leave on Monday, vacation leave. You get four days right away. Make the most of today. You know, I enjoy being with, with friends, uh, but I like it even more when, I, when I'm with my brothers, when I'm with my family, when I'm with my cousins. So I really carve out time. And what I do is I spend, I, I do family weekends, okay? And family weekends are off-the-grid weekends, off-the-grid weekends. No work. Viber just keeps ringing. I'm not going to answer, you know. Off-the-grid weekends. You see, presence is important because to achieve or to get to the purpose, we need to be present. Presence will nourish the relationship. Presence will nourish the, the relationship. Lastly, we have to be intentional with our practice. Be intentional with your practice. I said earlier that presence will nourish the relationship. Then the closer the relationship, the greater the influence. The closer the relationship, the greater the influence. You see the correlation or the linkage of all three. You need to be present so that you can build relationship. Then, you, then when you have the relationship, you will have the influence. Okay? So that's how, that's how it's being linked. The closer the relationship, the greater the influence. You know, what I love with our family is that me and my parents are, are close. My dad, he's a boss, but he's not just a boss in work. He's a boss at home, but what kind of boss is he? You know those kinds of managers who are very good with people in the office, something like, something like that. You guys, you guys have that? My dad is like that to us. So whenever we are at home, I have a coaching session with my dad on leadership, on work, finances. In fact, I review financial statements of our family with my dad, with my dad. And that's the kind of relationship that we have. It's amazing, really, what presence will lead to for your families. The closer the relationship, the greater the influence. And because of that relationship, I always feel that there's a hedge around me. I always feel that there's a hedge around me. 
whenever I go through hard times, I always know that because we have a good relationship in the family, I know that there will be people behind me. In fact, in the hardest of times, it's my family who's always there for me. In the times that I need disciplining, it's my family who first disciplines me. The closer the relationship, the greater the influence. Number th- second point in this point, think of practical activities that will nurture a culture of intimacy. Think of practical activities that will nurture a culture of intimacy. You know, when I was a new Christian, I wasn't very discerning in sharing Jesus to to them. And so when I was sharing, you know, and invite them, etc., I think I turned them back, turned them away, turned them away because I wasn't very discerning. And over time, I had to readjust. We praise God, really, because he gave, he gave me a chance to readjust. He gave me wisdom to adjust my approach. And so over time, over time, two years, one year, they were the ones who would prepare then my clothes when I would lead worship in the province on Sundays. And just very recently, sometime in January, back then, if I would invite my parents, they would say No. But in January, I was able to invite my mom and uh, no hesitation. She said, okay, let's go. And it was an amazing time because it was a worship service here at, the, here at the center. And it was a worship service where the pastor asked us to pray for the ones beside us. If you were there, if you can remember. And so on that time, I prayed with my mom for our family. You see? Think of practical activities that will nurture a culture of intimacy. I have two cousins. They're very, they were young back then. I grew up with them. I was their babysitter when they were two to three years old. And now they're 18. But I was with them. I lived with them for six to seven years. And so I have a very, very high I have a very, very close relationship with them and therefore I have a very, very high influence to them. And because they know me, they know that I love them and I care for them. And then, therefore, it is very easy to disciple them. And so whenever I would sleep over in their house, we could have cousins' devotion and pray for our families. You see, think of practical activities that nurture a culture of intimacy. You have, we have to do our part. We have to participate. There's no one who can do that for you, just you. Only you could do that for your family. And lastly, persevere in prayer. Persevere in prayer. Because you see, our members in the family, they are also attacked. They have issues, they have struggles that they deal with on their own. And we all recognize that we cannot really control anyone. We we cannot really transform the heart of anyone. And the only way that we could really help them, the greatest way that we could help them is to pray for them. Ultimately, we must go to God to protect our families. We must go to God to protect our families. What I suggest you can do is you buy a notebook, 50 pesos, write the names of your family members and message them. Ask them, message them. How can I pray for you? In the same way that you can pray for your brothers and sisters in your breakouts, ask your families how you can pray for them because you'll be surprised at what answers you could get you will be surprised and the greatest way that we can defend and protect our family is to pray for them and persevere in praying for them you know I'm gonna call before I call a sister I'll just summarize 
there is a purpose and we need to participate in God's purpose. And for that purpose to become a reality, we have to be present. Be present. Because presence will nourish the relationship. The closer the relationship, the greater the influence. And practice, practice. I'm going to call a sister to share how she applied these points to her family. Let's welcome Tina. Hello, good evening. Our discipleship group was in full support when Pastor Albert answered the call to bring back CCF in Makati in 2011. I was a very young Christian then, and I fell in love with serving in ministry. I didn't fully understand the demands of the job and the price that I had to pay. All I knew was that I wanted to serve the Lord. In my head, I was putting the Lord first and honoring Him with my labor. However, I also forsake the closest people to me in the process, my family. When it came to ministry, I was always all out which left me exhausted whenever I'd go home. I was in the house to eat, sleep, and kiss my family, but I wasn't actively pursuing our relationship with them. I often ate alone after hours because I would miss dinner time often due to going home late from fellowship. I was the only Christian in the family, and when my parents would reprimand me about my behavior and neglect for them, I always became very defensive. It was my belief that they did not know the Lord and so they had no right to judge me or my actions. They became very resentful of Christianity because of my poor testimony and they started to question everything. Sorry. They started to threaten me about the curfew, taking my car and being thrown out of the house altogether. They also began to hate the church and my Christian friends because they thought that my bad behavior was being encouraged by fellowship. The loving and comfortable home I once knew has become a place of war because of my own doing. I was going against God's plan for the family, but the Lord was still kind and gracious. Little by little, the Spirit worked in me and made me realize the folly of my ways. I actively decided to be less headstrong, more submissive, and more loving to keep the peace at home and to make God's purpose in my family clear. It is in his heart to bless our families, and this required me to exercise my responsibility to love. When my parents would find fault in me, I just apologized regardless because it was the loving thing to do. I just took in all the words even though I did not understand the reason for their anger. Things improved, but there was still one thing that my mom and I often argued about, and it was going home late. One night, as my mom was waiting for me to finish a Bible study, she came across an agent selling property just behind CCF Makati. Things went by so quickly, and I ended up living just behind the church. Although my family never verbalized their approval for my ministry work, the fact that they allowed me to live so close to the church really made a statement. It also meant that my mom and I never had to fight about me going home so late again as I would just need to walk home from church most nights. My family relationship was restored and we were happy once again. I even got to the point of sharing the gospel to them. Although they are not yet attending CCF with me, it was enough for me that they know the truth about the doctrine of salvation. We enjoyed a good few months together, but my happiness was short-lived. I received a call from my sister one day, and she told me that our mom has passed away due to heart failure. Just imagine my shock as just the day before, we were laughing and talking like normal. It was very painful, but the Lord prepared our family. Because we were already in good terms with each other, dealing with the loss as a unit was easier. My dad, even as my mom was still lying in her casket, encouraged me even more to serve the Lord. As he said that the sudden death of a loved one is not an excuse to harbor negative feelings towards God. Our response should be, 
of thanksgiving for the many years that my mom was with us, and that of praise now that she is in heaven. What a guy, right? I understood that my dad was being extra strong for me, but deep inside, he must be feeling vulnerable also. So I tried to be extra present for him. I lessened my Sunday involvement in ministry to be able to spend more time at home, but my dad wanted more. In 2016, he came across worship being available via live stream and requested that I stay at home completely on Sundays. I was uncomfortable with the setup, but I knew in my heart that the Lord would be pleased. More time at home also paved the way for a stronger and deeper relationship with my dad. I can now sit with him for breakfast and ask him about his week. It also means that I can cook lunch, dinner, play with our dogs more. I can also watch more movies with my sister. Being mindful of my presence really made a world of difference in my family life. My dad, sister, and even our pets feel more loved because love is spelled as time. I don't go home every day, but I make sure to talk to my family as much as I can. I'd also send them videos of the random things I do every day for their entertainment. It doesn't do much, but at least it makes them laugh. And I'm happy to make them laugh. The Lord made, made it so that everything was back to normal and that I was in good standing with my family once again. My heart continuously yearned for live worship though, so it remained one of my biggest prayer items. I wanted to worship the Lord and honor my family at the same time. As the two are not different things, they are one thing. Honoring our family is a form of worship unto the Lord. Fast forward to late last year when the opportunity to work full time for the Lord came about. It was my family who first encouraged me to apply as they saw my deep joy in ministry. With their, with their blessing followed all doors just bursting wide open. With every step of the way, the will of God just became more apparent. My new job in full-time ministry also came with mandatory work on Sundays. This means that I can now go back to worshiping with God's people. I can also serve them and get to know them better and just be there for them, just as my heart desired. I also got to move my Sabbath on a Monday, which means that I will not be neglecting my family in the name of worship. I am at home every Monday without fail, and I have said no to all commitments, aside from my Monday evening Bible study, which my family approved beforehand. I'm really learning to be completely intentional with my practice, to make sure that nothing is falling in the cracks ever again. As we are vigilant with our relationship with God, so we must be as well with our relationship with our families. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor build in vain. My family and I have begun praying for each other and actively seeking prayer first in the face of any problem. We have also begun to exchange prayer requests from each other so that we can be more rooted in our relationship with God. With how surprising things turned out to be, I am confident that it is only the Lord's hand at work in all this. I know that one day my family and I will all be together in heaven, but until then, we stand as one in loving each other and loving God. The joy of having them in my life is just incomparable. To God be the glory. So let me close it here. Let me close it here. Uh, what is your number one, number one commodity for singles? What's one, one of the most sought after commodity that we have as singles? Time, right? Time. Time is one of our most sought after commodity. Pag tinanong mo isang singles, parang laging kulang oras. Parang daming daming kakawin. Daming laging kalendaryo. Tinanong mo yung kalendaryo puno-puno. And so time is one of our most cherished commodity. Kung makakakuha tayo ng 36 hours a day, imbis sa 24, kukunin natin yun. Right? So if time is our most valuable commodity, would it that be our best gift to the people that we love? That's the best gift that we can give them. And, that's, and, not, and it's not going to be expensive. It's not going to cost you. It's not going to cost you. In fact, it will bless you. And so tonight, as we go to our success in the family session uh, into a close, 
Think of one thing that you could start doing to your family now. By the way, huwag mo na isipin yung gusto mo mag-tour na around the world with them. Huwag mo na yun, huwag mo na mga ganun. Huwag mo na yung malalaking bagay na ganun. No? Or bibigyan mo ng, ng bahay at tupa si mommy at daddy. Okay din yun, pero you know, what I'm trying to say is think small but act consistently. Think of something very small and act consistently. Number one, Aplik, yun nga, time, di ba? Ano pwede mong gawin sa bahay? Huwag kang umalis. Di ba? Ano pwede mong gawin? Samahan mo mga magulang mo. Right? Ano pa pwede mong gawin? Ano pa pwede mong gawin? Tumulong ka sa bahay. Right? Ano pa pwede mong gawin? Pag may nag-aya sa iyo ng kaibigan mo sa CCF na manood daw ng Avengers, sabi mo, teka, Kasama ko kaya yung magu- mami ko kaya yung kapatid ko kaya yayayain ko to Avengers. Diba? Parang, ow! Bibigla yun. Ano mo, one of the things I love doing is watching movie with my mom. I love to be with people, I love to be with, with my single friends. Pero yung movies, minsan naman natin nakasama ko rin yung mga friends ko sa singles, pero yung movies, naka, ano yan, naka ano yan kasi sa mami ko. Yan ang date time namin. Tapos pag, pag mag-dinner kami, kakain kami, siya lagi yung tinatanong ko, masa mo gusto kumain? Ah, sabihin niya, gusto ko ganito, gusto ko niya. Wala na akong comment. Okay, doon tayo kakain, derecho. Pwede tayo kakain doon. Sabihin niya, uh, oh, doon na naman tayo kakain. Sabihin, meron kami favorite restaurant. Doon na naman tayo kakain? Okay lang ba dito? Dito na naman tayo kakain? Sabihin sa akin. Kahit ayoko doon, sabihin ko, of course ma, okay dito. <laughs> Why? Because that's my intentionality and presence to her. Folks, alam mo nung ginawa ko yun, Pag nakikita ko yung nanay ko, kano siya kasaya pag nakakasama yung anak niyang very busy. Ibang klase. Priceless. So, pag di natin gawin? Ang dali-dali. Oras lang. O ngayon, sabi ni Vince, bukas, Sabado, Linggo, Lunes, Martes, walang pasok. Holiday ba sa Tuesday? O, oh, kung meron mo kayong plano, lagyan nyo ng konting plano yung magulang ang kapatid nyo or isama nyo. Bigyan nyo ng oras. You know why? Because it's an amazing experience. Let me close with this story. Everybody read this with me. He who fails in the ordinary works of love will not even have an opportunity when the supreme moment for the performance of the extraordinary arrives. Start small, but be consistent. He who fails in the ordinary works of love will not have an opportunity when the supreme moment for the performance of the extraordinary arrives. Folks, how can we live this way? How, how can we live this way? How can we truly love without envy? How can, we truly, how, we can, how can we truly love and not getting angry all the time? How can we truly love without thinking of ourselves? How can we, th- how can we love without thinking of ill of others? How can we love with always the truth. How can we do that? Alam mo, sagot? We can't. We can't. Only God can do that for us. In ourselves, we have no power. In ourselves, we have no power. So let me suggest to you a closing prayer tonight as we close. Let me suggest this closing prayer. Ganito yung mga prayer na pinapakinggan ng Panginoon. Lord, hindi ko talaga alam pa paano magmahal. Hirap ako eh. Kasi mahal na mahal ko yung sarili ko, Lord. Yung kapatid ko, hindi ko siya, ma- hindi ko siya matiis. Ayoko siya makasama. Pero Lord, please, tuwan mo ako. Paano ko siya makakasama? Kasama ko siya sa kwarto, ang kulit-kulit. Kuha na kuha ng mga gamit ko. Gusto ko sapakin. Pero Lord, suro mo sa akin magmahal eh. So tulungan mo ako magmahal. Lord, yung boss ko, saksa ka ng boss. Ang tamad-tamad. Lord, hindi ako na-inspired, hindi ako na-encourage. Lord, pero kailangan ko siya mahalin. Lord, tuluan mo ako. Lord, yung mga magulang ko, Lord. Hindi naman talaga sila magulang magmahal sa akin eh. Pero Lord, you told me that I should love them because when I honor my parents, I bless your name. So Lord, can you please help me? Kasi hindi ko talaga kaya eh. Kasi apart from you, Lord, hindi po ako pwede magmahal. Pero alam ko, gusto mo po ako magmahal at gusto po ko tang sundin. Kaya tulungan niyo po ako. Alam niyo mga ganong dasal? Sinasagot yun. Kasi inaamin natin na hindi natin kaya eh. Pero pag inaamin mong kayang-kaya mo, hindi tayo, tutu- ba tayo tutulungan. Kaya mo magmahal? Hindi mo kaya magmahal. Ang hirap. So ano gagawin natin? Pumunta tayo sa Panginoon. Because only He can do that. 
Sooner or later, when you get to the bottom of things and admit the truth that apart from you, you can't re- apart from the Lord, you can't really love. That kind of prayer, God loves to answer. So can we pray that prayer tonight as we draw to a close in prayer and as I ask the band to come here on stage? Can we do that? So why don't we pray?